I'm sure you would agree that what is most important to you is that you and your team stay safe when doing your job. But knowing all the ASME inspection requirements and understanding when something is safe to use can be a challenge. Don't worry though, we're here to help. In today's video, we are going to focus on shackles and the ASME B3026 rigging hardware standard so you can feel confident that your shackle is safe for use. I'm Ben Hangst and this is the Lifting and Rigging Channel. Today, we are going to break down the inspection requirements, service removal criteria, and best practices for use for your shackles according to the ASME B3026 Rigging Hardware Standard. We'll let you know shackle identification requirements for the body and the pin, the types of inspection a shackle shall receive during its service life, shackle inspection criteria, and the criteria that would remove a shackle from service, and the best practices for using and maintaining shackles. By the end of this video, you should be able to recognize if a shackle is safe for use and have a better understanding of how to inspect a shackle and how frequently your shackles should be inspected. So, let's get into it. ASME B3026 rigging hardware is a standard created by the American Society of Mechanical Engineers and focuses on a number of different pieces of rigging hardware, including shackles, adjustable hardware, compression hardware, links, rings, and swivels. In this video, we'll specifically focus on shackles and how to perform an inspection that fits the ASME B3026 standards. First, let's take a look at the two pieces of a shackle. Two pieces of the shackle, you're gonna have the body of the shackle and your pin. First, you wanna have the manufacturer. Uh, this particular shackle is Crosby. You're gonna want the working load limit, which on this one is three and a quarter ton. And you're gonna want the size, which is listed right here at five eighths. Shackle pin, the, inf uh, the information is gonna be somewhere on the pin. Uh, what you're gonna look for is the name or the manufacturer. So we've got Crosby Group, CG, and then you've got the, the type of pin, which is HS for high strength. If you have a shackle and you cannot read any of that information, if you can't read the capacity, if you don't know who the manufacturer is in or the size, maybe it's worn off um, in some capacity, if you can't read that information on your shackle pin, you're gonna wanna remove that item from service. Before we get into the full shackle inspection criteria, you might be wondering how often you need to inspect your shackles. Shackles need to be inspected on a regular basis. There are three types of ASME B3026 rigging hardware inspections that will occur throughout the service life of your shackle. You're gonna have the initial, you're gonna have the frequent, and you're gonna have the periodic. With the initial, basically maybe these shackles just came into your, your facility. You wanna make sure they're the right shackles the ones that you ordered. So again, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you can clearly read all of the information that's required. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure it's the right style of shackle you ordered, which could be a screw pin, a round pin, and a cotter type shackle. Prior to use, all new, altered, modified, or repaired shackles shall be inspected by a designated person to verify compliance with the applicable provisions of ASME B3026 rigging hardware. If you are confused on who a designated person is, I explain the OSHA definitions of competent, qualified, designated, and certified persons in the video linked in the description below. What you need to know is that a designated person is someone assigned the task of performing the inspection by the employer. A frequent inspection is gonna be your daily or pre-shift inspection. The designated person or user is going to inspect those items for all of the criteria, the removal criteria, uh, prior to placing them in service. Records are not required. Okay, a periodic inspection is gonna be performed by a qualified or competent person. Uh, it's gonna be a minimum uh, once per year or every 12 months. With that, again, you're gonna be a thorough inspection of the body and the pen. So with your shackle inspection, uh, for a periodic inspection, uh, records are not required. However, at Mozilla, we do document shackle inspections. Now, we're not gonna have an individual line item for each shackle, we might have a quantity. So if we looked at 25, three and a quarter ton shackles, 
of a specific type, we are going to document that through our periodic inspection for our customers. How often do you need to inspect your shackles? The frequency of a periodic inspection is going to be determined by a few factors. Uh, it's going to be how many times a day the shackle is used, uh, the severity of the application that the shackle is used in, and also the environment. Is it a caustic, acidic environment? Is it humid, uh, heat, cold? Uh, that's all going to play a part in how many periodic inspections you need to perform a year uh, on your shackles. Now let's take a look at the criteria that goes into an ASME B3026 shackle inspection and what criteria would be caused to remove your shackle from service. For the, the inspection of your shackle, whether it's initial, frequent, or periodic, uh, really you want to start with all the identification. You want to make sure we have legible uh, working load limit, your manufacturer, and the size um, or grade of your shackle. Also on the pin, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that that information is clearly legible too. After that, we're gonna be looking for the physical damage um, that might uh, be incurred by a shackle. Gonna to wanna to make sure that there's no uh, rusting, pitting, corrosion. Gonna to wanna to make sure that there's no heat damage. Um, was a, the shackle used in an ultra cold environment? Um, is it stretched? Is it worn more than 10% in any area? Has it been twisted? Has anybody removed a pin and replaced it with a, uh, a non-factory pin? Uh, is the cotter in great shape? Um, are the threads damaged on the type of pin? Uh, basically, you're just looking to see if you can see any physical defect that was not factory. So, let's inspect some shackles and decide if they should be removed from service. When we're gonna start, again, we've been mentioning, we wanna make sure that we can see the manufacturer. We wanna make sure that we can see the working load limit. We wanna make sure that we can see on the pin the proper markings for the manufacturer and what type of pin it is. As we start to work through, we're looking for all the failure criteria, but number one place I wanna start is with the pin. Want to make sure that the threads of the shackle pin are not damaged. Want to make sure that uh, upon full engagement that with this type of screw pin that it sits properly and that there's no play. As I work through the body, make sure that there's no uh, undue stress created, any heat damage, any of those type of issues. Again, I can still read all of the information clearly. With this shackle right here, again, I'm gonna start with looking for the manufacturer, which I can see the manufacturer, see the working load limit, and I can see the size of the shackle. Look at the pin. We've got our manufacturer initials. We've got the type of pin and the size. So as I do a physical, uh, physical inspection, again, I'm gonna start with the pin. Make sure all my threads and that the, the pin itself can operate properly. Make sure there's nothing wrong. Get it back to full engagement. I see it seats nicely, properly there. But as I look through the body of the shackle, something looks a little wrong. Flip it over and get another view. I can see that the shackle has been stretched and twisted into a certain little direction here. Um, upon that finding, this would be removed from service. So again, as we get into another inspection of a shackle, make sure I can see the manufacturer, the capacity and the size for the shackle. But then obviously we're gonna see that there's a tremendous amount of wear in the body of this shackle, uh, well exceeding 10%. Uh, so this would be an immediate removal from service. I would say the top three reasons that I would pull a shackle from service would be lacking the proper identification that's required, uh, illegible identification that's required, and almost always usage of an improper pin replacement for that particular shackle. What are some best practices when using, inspecting, and storing your shackles and all of your rigging equipment? Make sure your shackles and rigging equipment have the proper markings and identification are in acceptable working condition and pass a visual inspection, are stored in an area where they are not susceptible to extreme temperatures, excess moisture, chemical exposure, or mechanical damage. Be aware and make sure that your operators and riggers are aware
to avoid using shackles in temperatures in excess of 400 degrees Fahrenheit and below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. If shackles are to be used in temperatures above or below these ranges, the manufacturer and or a qualified person should be consulted. The strength of a shackle can be affected by exposure to caustic or acidic environments. If your shackles have been exposed to or will be used in a chemically active environment, you should consult the manufacturer or a qualified person. Some shackles are engineered to handle some form of side loading. For these types of shackles, there will be a reduction to the weight load limit as specified by the manufacturer. If you need help understanding which shackle you should be using for your application, then check out our video on the different types of shackles and their applications linked in the description below. And if you need help determining your new working load limit when side loading per ASME B3026 standards, our video, How Do Sling Angles Affect Load Rating Capacity, should help. When it comes to using shackles, there are many rigging best practices that must be considered. Always ensure the pin threads are fully engaged and the shoulder of the pin is in contact with the shackle body. The shoulder is the part of the pin right here. Always ensure the cotter pin is in good working condition and if present is being used in conjunction with a bolt type pin or a round pin. Avoid contact with sharp edges that could damage the shackle. Avoid shock loading or allowing your load to jerk or free fall. Center the load in the bow of the shackle to prevent side loading. Multiple sling legs should be applied to the body of the shackle and not the shackle pin. If the shackle is side loaded, the rated load shall be reduced according to the manufacturer or a qualified person. When using a screw pin shackle, do not rig the load in a manner that would cause the pin to unscrew. Use bolt type shackles for long-term or semi-permanent installations. Do not drag shackles across rough or abrasive surfaces. Multiple slings in the body of the shackle shall not exceed 120 degrees in angle. When a shackle is used in conjunction with a choker hitch, the pin shall be connected to the choking eye of the sling. Having a full understanding of the ASME inspection criteria is the best way to keep yourself and your team safe. But we understand that this task can seem quite overwhelming. If you need help performing inspections, training, or forming a lifting and rigging compliance program, then click the link below to contact Mozilla and schedule a consultation. I hope after watching this video, you have a better understanding of the ASME B3026 rigging hardware standard, and you now feel confident inspecting your shackles. And you feel confident that when using them, yourself and your team are safe. If you found this video useful, informative, entertaining, or you just feel like being friendly, then hit that like button so we can get this information out to everyone who needs it. Subscribe and hit the bell so you never miss a video. If you have a question, drop it in the comments so we can answer it. My name is Ben, and I'll see you in the next one.